What is good guys, it's Ray J back with another video and in this one I'm going to be talking about the SPY, the NASDAQ, the QQQs in the future, what you should be watching for, for the future and what the trends are essentially showing us. I'm also going to be breaking down what's going on with the overall market, what big catalysts are coming out and how these things may affect the market for tomorrow. Now, before I break anything down, before I get into any more details, I do have to mention a couple of things before starting. Firstly, I'm not a financial planner, so don't take any of this as financial advice whatsoever. And also, if you guys can, please smash the like button if you want to see more videos like this. It not only benefits me, it benefits the entire community as a whole. And the last things, if you guys can, please check out the Weeble link down below in the description. If you sign up for Weeble, the link down below and deposit any amount of money into the account. You're guaranteed up to 12 free stocks, each worth up to $2,000. And the best part is any could be a free Tesla share, a free Apple share, or a mix of all of them. It's a limited time offer. The offer ends in just two weeks. Check it out before they run out. With that out of the way, let's get on with the video. Looking at the market, guys, things are not looking that great overall for uh, the bulls. I mean, we do have this very prominent downtrend that's being respected. And you could actually argue that this thing is looking like a falling wedge. However, it's going to be very dependent on news and what on earth is about to come out. So let's talk about the news, why on earth this is going to be very huge and the effect this will have on the markets. Tomorrow, guys, we have some big news coming out. We have the initial jobless claims. If you don't know what this is, this is basically the measure of how many people came out and actually filed for state unemployment insurance. In other words, it measures the strength in the labor market. So if the numbers are larger than expected, this shows weakness in the labor market. If this number is lower, right, less people are filing for unemployment, that means that the jobs market is doing a better job. It's stronger. And remember what we want in this economy. Remember how bad news is good news and good news is bad news. What's essentially going on is if the jobless claims are higher than expected, this would be good for the market because more people would be filing for unemployment. More people would be losing their jobs. This is good, believe it or not. I mean, it's really bad for the people. I want the best for everyone, but it's good for the stock market because the market wants pain in in our economy. They want to see jobs getting lost because this will help bring down inflation and stop the Fed from being more and more aggressive. On top of that, let's just say these numbers are very low and there aren't as many people filing for unemployment as, as expected. It's going to cause the market to react pretty negatively because we want higher pain in this market. This is what the stocks want. This is what the market makers and institutions and businesses want. They want more pain. All right. So right now, when looking at the way things are set up, we've seen a big increase in the put to call ratio for many, many of these different uh, stocks out there, not to mention the S&P 500. And many people are starting to buy into those puts. I just reloaded this so it's like up to date. More and more puts were being bought like crazy. And this in turn is showing signs that people are expecting potential downside. Now, the problem with people buying puts is if way too many people do it at once. You know, the market makers they are more likely to actually cause the market to push to the upside to kind of cause pain to these people. But please note that I mentioned they're more likely to do this. They don't always end up doing this, all right? Because it's going to be dependent on the news. Then after the jobless claims reports and all that, we have the Fed speakers coming. We have Bullard coming up, not to mention other big governors. It's going to be very important. You know, their words will affect how the market moves. So given this overall setup, if you are bullish in this market, you could argue that, oh, we have this falling wedge and we're about to get a big bounce tomorrow. I don't really want to guarantee that. It's going to depend on the jobs report. All right. I think everything is like set for it. Now, if the jobs report is like kind of decent or barely meeting expectations, but the Fed speakers come out and they're very, very hawkish, the market could still take a hit, guys, and start coming down like this. I personally, I'm not a fortune teller. I don't truly know how it's going to come out. It's going to depend on these jobs reports. On the SPY, you will notice that uh, we have what I believe to be, is this a gap? This gap actually got filled. No, it hasn't been filled yet. So there's a mini gap right here. We could actually see the SPY come up and fill this gap to the upside. So this zone right here, if we are very bullish and we see the market begin to pop. And if you want to talk about the gap that's like way above at like 406 gap if we want to push the 406 guys we got to get a clean break above 400 and we have not done that so far on top of that guys if you look at the overall trend we have been respecting a downtrend you could uh, argue that too so it still is not showing the strength we want to see but it is getting tighter and the chop is continuing until we see the big news that comes out 
Now, I believe what's most likely going to happen is the report might be pretty decent. I mean, I don't truly know. And we might actually see the market pump a little bit into open, but then it, the whole thing could be a fake out because of the Fed speakers. When they are very, very hawkish, the market could actually make a U-turn and start bleeding as the day goes on. So I do anticipate a very sideways day. And if we do retest this 395 to 394.5 zone, we are likely going to see how buyers step in because this is a demand zone. Break below 394.5 and this thing is going to come down pretty hard in my opinion and maybe come very close to about 390 all right so you have to watch that 394 zone very very carefully now if we continue to hold it's very possible in my opinion it what, what i'm going to essentially see is the market end up trying to push up a little bit but we have lots of resistance on the way up to do so you can see the market got rejected off 397 and is looking pretty weak as of right now but it's going to depend on the news in my opinion though given this trend it does look a little bit more bearish now than bullish on these bigger time frames because there have been so many catalysts that the market does not like also guys look at the trend uh compare this to this and you guys will notice that we were pushing up pretty hard we start to kind of plateau right here then we start coming down pretty hard. This is very similar to the trend that we are currently seeing. So there is a chance the market is going to start downtrending relatively soon. And we could even see the 380s within the next two weeks. It's very possible. But like I said before, it depends on the news and how the market reacts. For Tesla, my prediction was 386 for today. That is what ended up happening. But it's going to depend. <coughs> excuse me. Where we move is going to depend heavily on the news. If Tesla, if the whole market were to rally out of nowhere, there's a gap right here, a very big gap that could push Tesla to three, uh, one nine three, all the way up there. In order for that to happen, we got to get a clean break above one ninety. It's very possible, but it's going to depend on the news, right? If things do not go as planned, and let's just say the market continues to downtrend, Tesla has the next support zone at like 185. Break below that, and this thing is going to come tumbling down pretty hard to 180. This is where the previous demand zone was. So be very careful right here, guys, because it could, like I said, it could go either way. It's going to depend on the data and the news. But I want to prepare you guys for both potential sides. On the QQQ, same thing. We have a big gap up here. Could we fill the gap tomorrow? It's possible for the market to pump. But it's going to depend on the data. If this thing does not pump and we see the market continue to come down, then I'm going to be watching this 384 level. Break below 384 and this thing will likely end up downtrending and approaching that. Uh, did I say 3? I meant 284. We're going to end up approaching that 280 zone if things don't go as planned. On the DWAC, my prediction yesterday was that this is going to be like a buy the rumors, sell the news events, which means that once the big news comes out for the reason that this thing was popping, we could get either like a pop and then start coming down or we would just bleed from there. So be very careful with these events, these viral events that cause stocks to pump. Be very, very mindful of how they are affected by the overall market and how they're affected by pieces of news, by FOMO and hype. Google looks pretty strong overall, maybe not super strong compared to the market, but we do have a gap down here. I think we also have a gap up to like two, uh, 103. And on top of that, we have to break past 100 to actually get that. We're basically in the middle right now. And it's going to depend on the news, right? The market is very uncertain about how the news is going to come out with the jobs. And that's why I'm still very, very cautious. On the VIX, uh, if you look at what the VIX is looking like right now, Actually, let me use a smaller time frame when talking about this. So from a shorter time frame, you will notice that this VIX looks like it's just holding up these levels. It's respecting an uptrend, at least for the time being. And this is a sign that the market could actually continue to see more downside. But if the market makes a U-turn, the VIX also has this gap down here. You have to watch for just in case this thing does end up coming down. So be very careful with this. Uh, based on what we're seeing, it's going to be very dependent on the news and what the job numbers show us. Apple is starting to push just a little bit, but overall, guys, it is still pretty down. And I did anticipate some downside for Apple. Where it goes is once again going to depend on the news. If things are good, this thing is going to push above 150, continue to push maybe as high as 152. If things are bad and the market does end up taking a big hit, I anticipate Apple to come all the way down to 146. And if it breaks below that, and I think we have pretty nice support right there. If we break below that, you have to watch these critical levels around 144 to 145. 
Anyways, guys, that's what I have for this video. I mean, I know it's very frustrating that I don't have like a perfect direction for everyone. It's very hard to do that every single day. And just watch these numbers tomorrow. Watch the initial claims that come out, okay? See how the market responds. And then listen to some announcements by the Fed speakers. That will also affect the market. Anyways, that's what I have for this one. Thank you all so much for listening. And I'll see you guys in the next one. The market to the moon because the long-term future is still incredibly bright. And peace out.